All right, guys, let's get into this. Um, <laughs> we're riding off the back of more uh, Sneeko Moist Critical. I looked at their conversation the other day. Uh, you know, check it out, guys. And somehow, after watching it, uh, somehow Sneeko comes out of it looking, well, kind of winning the debate. He's wrong. Um, but he still ends up winning the debate part of it. Some Moist Critical just comes off extraordinarily uh, misinformed. It was the bad luck. I don't think it did anything positive. I don't even know why Moist Critical talked to the guy. You don't need to give him that attention. He's not saying anything that anybody's like, oh my god, this is so crazy. You know, the stuff that he's running defense for is frankly disgusting. But, Steve, but you know, Moist uh, talked to him still, gave him an opportunity to talk to his audience, which is what ends up happening because Nico was able to talk to the guy's audience. And I wouldn't doubt that some people were like, wow, this guy seems kind of smart and reasonable, you know, out of his audience that you know, don't understand how gross Nico's perspective is. We're obviously going to talk about it more as the video goes on. We're a little early, early in the video. You know how it is. <clears throat> anyway, the quartering <laughs> seems to have made a uh, defense run. <laughs> for Sneeko, or rather the focus is from a lot of people um, how bad trans people are. Sneeko said some extraordinarily gross things in that debate uh, saying that 12 and 16 and 18 year olds, excuse me, should be able to interact with each other, which is by far the worst thing I've ever heard out of that entire debate. And yet the focus from a lot of people who don't like trans people is, yeah, but Charlie uh, was dumb when it came to a trans conversation. Sure, I agree. But like, I thought that I don't get it. Well, why would I don't know? Anyway, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe quartering um, goes just as hard in on Sneeko as he does Moist Critical. But I'm curious about what uh, what's said in this video. So let's check this out, and then maybe we'll check out the Nick Merck's perspective too. Well, let's get this going. He and his family. He and his family. Sneeko's trying. He and she and that family is thing. making that decision for that child's life. If that's the path they want to go down, it's like choosing a fucking sport. You can no, it's do not. You want to do. No, it's not. I don't know why you'd say it's a sport. You, you can that, do what you want to that, do. That, no, it's not. You go play sport, you quit, nothing changes. You cut off your d you can't glue it back on. Okay, so nobody cuts their wiener off, just to be clear. Um, <laughs> everybody has to understand this. Nobody cuts anything off. That's number one. Number two, I don't think you could show me a single instance of a, of a person with gender dysphoria diagnosed getting bottom surgery before 18. If you could... I would be shocked. Top surgery, maybe. Yeah, I know that there's some people before that. And by the way, I don't agree with top or bottom surgery before 18, just to be clear. But you're not going to be able to like really show that happening, especially to, in this conversation, they were talking about nine-year-olds, just to be clear. Right? So that's really the number one thing, just to be clear. Uh, number two, like, yeah, I'm uncomfortable with transitioning for young people before 18. However, if you look at the scientific data, it all points to the best outcomes for people with legitimate diagnosed gender dysphoria, not, mom, I'm non-binary, right? Because kids are always messing around experimenting with their gender and their identity and blah, 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 blah in general. But somebody with diagnosed gender dysphoria, the best outcomes are to help them uh, achieve gender affirming care, which is going to be considered age appropriate, depending on your age, right? So if you're nine, all you would do, let's say you were born a boy you would just present as a girl at school and use girl names. You wouldn't go through any hormones. There's no hormone to go through because you haven't hit puberty yet. That's it. And you'd experiment with how you felt about that. When you started puberty, that's when the conversation about puberty blockers happens. I'm uncomfortable with puberty blockers. If you get off them pretty quickly, there is, it's, the, it's, not, it's, it's, it's reversible. You, know, you will go through your normal puberty. If you stay on them for a long period of time, you probably are, it's going to have irreversible effects, but that would be the goal, <clears throat> right? To have those effects because somebody might have gender dysphoria and need that treatment. Like I said, I'm uncomfortable with it. I hope I don't have a kid like that because I don't want to go through that struggle because that sounds very difficult. What if I do? I'm going to love my kid and I'm going to listen to the science, the data, the facts, the mental health data, and the doctors, and my kid, and myself because I'd rather have a trans kid that's alive because I want to love my kid, right? Just to be clear, because that's what the data says. Time might move on. The data might shift. That's how science works, especially new sciences. And things might change. But right now, based on all the data, this is the best way to go. And if things do change, they're not going to change so drastically as to say, oh, this was never a good idea at all, ever. There'll just be more nuances in the conversation. Right? That's just how these things work. So, yeah, I believe in age-appropriate transitioning if it's needed. 
that's pretty much it. Not really the hottest take, but I'm uncomfortable with it. But nobody's getting their wiener cut off at nine years old. The, the, this is one of the things. It's like Moist Critical just you, sh- you should have pushed back against that. I don't think he he understands the process because if you actually thought that there were nine year olds getting bottom surgery, <laughs> I don't know why you wouldn't. You should be very much against that. So the fact that Moist Critical didn't push back against it, like, well, that's not happening, suggests to me that or is saying like, yeah, he basically it seems like he supports that potential behavior. I don't I don't get that. That doesn't really make any sense to me. So that really does communicate to people like a blind faith in you know what's going on. <laughs> we should be a little educated on something if you're going to support it. So anyway, let's continue. This guy's a brick, man. This guy's a brick. I thought he was smarter than this, man. Well, this week has been interesting. We've seen the Mr. Beast slash Chris Tyson uh, issues really draw a clear line of delineation between YouTubers uh, who who used to be, everyone used to think, oh, they're just so based, they're so cool, uh, and people who like are not lunatics. Um, okay. This whole thing is revealing a lot of people's own uh, wild opinions. Um, and I mean, you, you did a pretty hard line defense for a doctor disrespect. So if we're going to go with wild, well, this guy looks like me. If you're going to go with wild opinions, brother. <laughs> Let's just be clear. You're one of them. You're, you're one of the people with them. There was a debate on Friday between a very, very popular YouTube uh, content creator, somebody who is an anointed one. Anointed. In good, good favor of YouTube. Goes by Mo- Most Critical or Penguin Zero or Charlie. doesn't really matter. Okay. And Sneeko, um, revealing their true opinions on a wide variety of things. Now I want to put out, I want to put this out first. So they were debating, I guess, at one point during this debate. The, a lot of the debate centralizes around age of consent. Sneeko wants to basically abolish the age of consent and thinks that when somebody starts puberty, that's when they're old enough to be able to get married to a grown adult. He justified a 12 year old girl marrying a 20, uh, an 18 year old, which is absolutely disgusting. Arranged marriages are ex- the reason we don't do arranged marriages in the United States or in Western countries is because they are abusive. They're bad for the kid. So we stop doing that by every objective metric. The outcome of an arranged marriage is not good. It's open to um, different types of abuse. And that's why we don't let little kids marry adults. If he thinks that it's appropriate for a 12 or a 13 year old to get married to an 18 year old because they are mature enough in his eyes, physically mature, which is not true by the way physical maturity doesn't happen until about 17 years old that's when you end puberty typically so sneeko it's just that there's no 13 year old that is ever ready for this by a physical maturity also physical maturity doesn't really matter as much as mental maturity which is something that you're continuously developing up until really forever but up until about 25 years old however it, we don't need to set the age of consent to 25 because it's not about being perfectly fully m- mentally mature it's about hitting a point of mental maturity where you have the ability to have agency over yourself and make informed decisions about things going on around you right just to be clear but if you're okay with a 12 year old marrying an 18 year old that means that you're okay with a 12 year old marrying a 30 year old so yeah whether or not somebody who is like 21 should marry somebody who is 15 uh should never happen no they should not that's gross thank you thank you the quartering okay all right Hopefully you give this that talking point just as much focus <laughs> as Charlie's trans talking point. Okay. I know Sneeko's fan. People think just because I disagree with Moist Critical on this that I'm automatically siding with Sneeko. No, that's weird. That's messed up. I don't care what they did 200 years ago. I don't care what certain religions say. It's not okay. They both took incredible L's. Okay. Fair enough. Um, in this. Uh, Sneeko ended up winning, but... That is true. The debate, but at what cost? You know, I don't really think that, uh, you know, that age difference is something that I want to talk about. I'm not dying on that hill. Uh, okay. Um, it's a well wild debate to even have. If you're not going to have the conversation about that debate, then why are you going to have the conversation about tra- most critical side? Because by your logic, both of these would be some kind of an abuse of a child. So why are you only going to focus on one? I don't understand. But during this debate, um. Charlie not only referred to children getting life altering surgery to affirm their dysmorphia, okay, as the same thing as playing sports, he also believed that it was. I mean, by Sneeko's logic, if a 12 year old is old enough to consent to a 20 year old, then they're old enough to get gender affirming care now. <laughs> Just something to think about. Totally fine for them to have. Uh, life-altering surgeries, just as long as their parents agree. Certainly. 
Well, it's more than just the parents agree. This is why Moise Krugel shouldn't take in the debate. He's fundamentally correct. He's fundamentally correct, but the way that he expressed it was ignorant, and it's not going to help people understand what's happening. It's not just, oh, the doctor agrees. It's that your kid will have these persistent feelings of gender dysphoria for a period of time. They'll see doctors who have master doctorate degrees uh, when it comes to these types of topics, when it comes to uh, gender dysphoria. They are looking at the data and the research at all points in that direction being the best outcomes for somebody, and they're going through a careful process. So it's not just, oh, the doctor said, yeah, you should probably do that. It's much more than that. We're talking about over a decade of uh, training and care and studying the actual data that is coming out and continuously updating yourself on that data consistently. So it's not just, yeah, your kid just says a thing and it happens. That's not what happens. Certainly, we w certainly these parents wouldn't be uh, compelled to do any of this kind of stuff for clout. It's not like, it's not like um, you know, uh, you know, how many of, of uh, Megan Fox's kids are all trans? All of them? Like 100% or something? Like, it's not like people are compelled to, to you know, let their kids do this stuff for internet clout. So I think, I mean, I don't know why celebrities having all their, listen, I don't really know why celebrities have this to be honest with you. There's, I, to, to me, I want to differentiate like they're the trans umbrella, right? Encompasses people with legitimate diagnosed gender dysphoria and kids experimenting with their gender. We'll say it like that. When I was young, we did things for the, everybody was bisexual for attention. The girls at least, right? I'm not saying all trans people are like that. I'm saying that like young people tend to want to be unique and they experiment with their gender. We'll say, oh, I'm a drawn binary. I'm this. Most of them aren't, right? They're experimenting. There's a difference between the kid who says that they're non-binary versus a kid that's experiencing actual feelings of legitimate gender dysphoria. So celebrities with kids that are like, I'm non-binary. To me, that's just the celebrity wanting their kids to be unique or the kids going through some kind of phase or whatever most of the time. So let's just be absolutely clear about it. there's a difference between the two. I think they're like if my kid was like, Dad, I'm a boy, I'd be like, all right, whatever, I don't care. I'm not gonna give it attention. And maybe th that's probably just like nothing. Or maybe it'll be something that we'll have to deal with to, as they get closer to puberty. So both. Um, you know, I think if you look at Sneeko, he is Muslim and this is a Muslim He pretends to be Muslim, yeah. Some value, this marriage thing, so he's not really going to take the L in his community well no but it's a disgusting value it doesn't matter what religion support i mean like a christian religion supports this as well just to be clear there's no defined age of consent so i don't think a 21 year old should be marrying a 15 year old um you should be talking about how about the 12 year old and 18 year old which is what he led with you know you want to talk about somebody who's 40 marrying a 20 year old that's fine by me it's it's a it, yeah i don't care about adults you know it's a weird issue but it, not really a weird issue. Pretty hard, firm, gross shit. In this particular debate, here's one thing. Now, again, this is this is the clip I found. This is a clip of Nick Merckx reacting. But you need to listen to what how Charlie views how absolutely. I'm trying to be kind here. I know Charlie cooked me in a video one day, and I deserve that. And I, you know, I don't have any hostility. But what I'm concerned about is that he minimizes these life-altering surgeries um, that Europe has now started to peel back and ban, and new, you know, actual studies. Yeah, he's now proved that it's not really moving the needle on whether or not these people are happy and decide to stay on this planet. Sure, I'd love to see that those studies. I think that's that's a good thing that we're still so now. I don't know if the, so. I'm not super educated on what's going on in the UK. I don't know if they banned it because of a new study coming out saying like, hey, you shouldn't get gender. Um, you shouldn't get like whatever it is um, before you're 18, or if it's because like more right wing people that have no scientific background have gotten to office and were like. Yeah, we're going to ban this because we don't like it. I don't really know what the difference is. I don't really know. Um, <clears throat> but like, yeah, things are going to change. And it's a good thing. We have to figure out exactly what the proper treatment is here. And we have a whole slew of detransitioners now who are telling their stories. Like this is We have some, but the detransition rate's like 1%. So it's not like they're not representative of the entirety of people who are transitioned. They're just individuals who fell through the cracks. It's a big deal that you should not be, you know, minimizing. Um, listen to this. He and his family, he and she and that family, is thing. making that decision for that child's life. If that okay, so here we go. We got we have this here. Um, it, this is what it says is in twenty twenty four in March twenty twenty, England's National uh, Health Service announced that it would stop prescribing puberty blockers to children and young people with gender dysphoria or gender incongruence. The NHS said that it made the decision after reviewing evidence from 2020 and more recent publications and that there is not enough evidence to support the safety for clinical effectiveness. of pure, I mean, This is perfectly reasonable to me, generally speaking. Um, although it doesn't seem like they're not... It seems like they're canceling the support because they're not seeing enough evidence to support that it's working well. Not They're not canceling it or they're not banning it because it's not working, which 
so I mean, those are kind of two different things. You know, you kind of have to let some of these things play out and see how they go because this actually might work. Um, but okay. Puberty blockers will now only be available to young people in clinical research trials and some private clinics. Okay, that makes sense to me, though. Fewer than 100 young people are currently on puberty blockers via the NHS, and they will be able to continue to treatment it. Okay, so people who are on it can still continue treatment. People can still get on it if they're part of clinical research trials, which makes sense because they're still going to be able to be guided um, medically correctly. And they might. it seems like they might be open to reconstituting that. There's nothing wrong with that. This makes perfect sense. This is them being careful about it. This is like, this, in my opinion, this makes the most sense. It'll also be available through some private gender identity clinics. Okay, I mean, this makes sense to me. According to the NHS, clinical policy treatment for young people focuses on uh, sociological. Am I saying that right? Bro, am I like, I say psychological? Oh my God. Am I a fucking idiot? Psychosocial. Psychosocial. What the fuck? Okay, sorry. All right. And psychological support, gender affirming hormones and surgery may be available later in adulthood. I mean, this seems perfectly reasonable. There's nothing wrong with this whatsoever. This makes this seems like the smart way to go. It's not saying that it's bad. It's saying that they want more information and they want to um, evaluate the situation themselves more closely rather than just move forward with it. So what Charlie is saying here is that, oh, yeah, if, you, if your 12 year old wants to get a double mastectomy, as long as your parents agree. Well, that's not what he's saying at all, but OK. That's okay. That's literally his position. I'm not misrepresenting it. Well, he's saying that as long as the doctors are facilitating it, then it's okay, which kind of makes sense. Those are the professionals. So let me tell you this. And also, we'll just be clear. I'm not because I, I, he's exaggerating. I don't support 12 year olds getting double mastectomies. I'd be a fucking idiot. That's like idiot brain. They shouldn't be able to get shit like that until they're over 18. But just, some gender affirming care can be acceptable. But I, I'm, I'm not, I'm definitely against, uh, young people getting top or bottom surgery so unequivocally that is not okay and any doctor doing that should you lose their medical license for life rule number one is do no harm there is no medical reason to do this it does not as they tried to say for many years reduce the likelihood of these people this is how you don't know that <laughs> we don't, like that's not true I'm saying that it doesn't reduce likelihood the data is too young to know whether it does reduce suicidality or not that's what it comes down to. The data suggesting that it doesn't, it actually increases it, it's like 23 years old. Those studies have changed because back then it wasn't gender dysphoria, it was gender identity disorder. And it focuses mostly on physical rather than like the mental health aspect of gender dysphoria, right? So we don't have the absolute statistics right now to long-term prove that it has, um, that it reduces suicidality. But like, again, we kind of have to go based off what the data says and the data says we should you know, go move forward in gender affirming care to some degree. Demonic, these doctors and big tra demonic trans medicine is. What are you talking about? It's the doctors that are coming out with the data that says that it's inconclusive and they should shift in a different direction. How are they demonic? What? They only care about creating, um, creating a lifetime patient. It's what are you talking about? The doctors and the tr like trans medicine, whatever, they're the ones doing the studies to see if this is the right outcomes. How can you say that they're evil? When they're the ones doing the studies, they're the ones looking at the data and they're, this is what news happens with new sciences. They're constantly parsing through data to try to figure out what the right way to go is. Essentially, you end up in a situation where um, parents are lied to by these doctors. It what? happened to Elon Musk, some people, somebody who people think is extremely smart. Okay. Yeah. Well, I like how you said somebody, some, pe some people think he's extremely smart. We don't know what happened to Elon Musk. I, don't, I, know, I know his kids like trans. I don't really care. The doctors tell Elon Musk, well, if you don't put your kid on puberty blockers, they're going to leave this planet. I mean, there might be a level of truth that I don't know his situation very much. I know that he's like us. He's very, he, he's already pretty much just like a fucking right wing, like idiot, right? We, that's what it comes down to. He's the AOC of the right guys. So they're going to, you know, 40, the 47% meme is not a joke. That's a real statistic. It's probably higher than nowadays. Okay. <laughs> um, so doctors will tell parents, if you don't do this, you're, you're going to lose your kid. You know, do you want a trans son or one that isn't alive? That's literally what they say. You don't, I don't, that's not literally what they say. Have you gone to the facilities? They probably will say like, hey, there's an increased chance of suicide if you don't have your kid transition, but. Okay. Um, and that's wrong. It is not backed by science. It is not backed by data. And then you have some. Well, there is data that says that like that type of uh, inclination is increased with people that have gender dysphoria. So just to be clear, we know that. The debate is on whether in the long term, the outcomes of transitioning 
age appropriately are having more positive outcomes and they seem to be having more positive outcomes that based on the data that we have now right and some of that seems to be changing like like the nhs is like okay we're still going to allow gender uh, affirming care but we want to we want to facilitate that more intimately so that we can watch it and see what the outcomes are just to be clear <laughs> okay somebody like charlie saying well if the parents agree go ahead I mean, the existence of the sheer number of detransitioners disproves Charlie's insane. No, it doesn't, because those numbers are like less than one percent of trans people. <laughs> OK, dangerous rhetoric. The no, sheer number of people who are suing their doctors and gender clinics disproves Charlie's very dangerous rhetoric. So one, you could sue if you want. It doesn't mean that you're going to win Two, no, sheer numbers don't matter. We care about proportionality. So it could be a thousand detransitioners are suing. But there might be a million people who went through some kind of um, gender affirming care that are happy with that care, right? It's less than 1%, just to be clear. To minimize this down to whether or not somebody plays sports or whether or not yes, the parents that is a stupid agree take. is insane. Well, That's the parents should have a level of say in their kids' health care, just to be clear. But the it's sports take is stupid. It's, not, it's really not a decision. Oh, I want to play this sport. I want to play that sport. It's a legitimate feeling of dysphoria. Okay. That they want to go down. It's like choosing a fucking sport. You can no, it's do not. You want to do. No, it's not. Again, the, Nick Merckx is everybody here. Let me play this uninterrupted so Charlie's fans don't have a meltdown and think that I'm misrepresenting what he's saying. He's literally saying. Charlie's fans are criticizing him because he comes off really stupid. Having gender affirming, you know, surgeries the, 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 or yeah. puberty blockers is the same <sighs> thing as choosing to play tennis or not. He and his family, he, try, he and she and that family is making thing. that decision. Well, I mean, the difference between choosing tennis or not is how white you are. <laughs> okay. Decision for that child's life. If that's the path they want to go down, it's like Damn, choosing a sport. You can no, do it's not. You want to do. No, it's not. The, you, you can that, do what you want to that, do. No, it's not. You go play sport, you quit, nothing changes. You He's 100% right. Nick Merckx is 100% right. Sure. Also, you probably aren't going to get the same feeling of dysphoria if you quit your sport, right? Or <laughs> right, like that's there's it's a little different than choosing a sport because it's not the decision isn't as meaningful. Look, Charlie no. is a guy in either direction that got popular um, by having a a, a a a unique delivery to common sense reactions to everything. Every video he he puts out, he speaks from the high road and with hindsight. Okay, this is a guy that is not a deep thinker. He plays, he plays, um, <laughs> he's got to write about some of these things, video games, and he knows whether or not a YouTuber scamming somebody is a bad thing. <laughs> a little based, a little base there, quartering, a little base, buddy. He, it is an echo chamber. It is a hug box. I mean, that's literally your audience quartering. So he is not espousing anything, uh, controversial. Now, when he Sports gets into permanent issues like consciousness, yeah, that's true. I mean, I would be afraid of my kid playing like football because you can get like a fucking TBI. So, but I guess there's a level of truth there, but most sports aren't as dangerous as that. An unscripted, by the way, every video he makes is scripted, so he can carefully, you know, craft what he's going to say. Don't you do the same thing? Okay. Unless you do it live, I feel like it's scripted. No, <laughs> what? Okay. Again, <clears throat> I implore Charlie to have a conversation, not with me, but one of the many popular detransitioners with many followers on Twitter and hear from them their stories. Yeah. So that's cool. Talk to detransitioners. I think that's a great idea to talk to detransitioners so we can learn more about getting the proper care. But a detransitioner having a bad relationship with their transition statistically is not as common as people having a good relationship with their detransition. There's also different types of detransitioning. There is like, oh, this was not for me. There is a detransitioning to have kids. There are people who will detransition because they've hit a point of transitioning that they're comfortable with. So you kind of you, you, you wean off of the medication. Um, just to be clear, thank you for the $2 Alvin Park. Quarter pounder really brings my day down. I feel you, brother. I am not the right person to talk about the, the, the journey that detransitioners go through. There are dozens of them, okay, on Twitter. Wow, dozens of them? Chloe's one of them. They're, if Charlie wants to reach... That's not a lot. I'm just saying. Chad, I can put him in contact with a half... Thank you for the $2 from Mason. Poop, thank you. Half dozen detransitioners. The That's six? Okay. The idea that he would say that is the same as a sport is dangerous <laughs> rhetoric. It's not really dangerous rhetoric. It's just stupid. <laughs> so. Do you believe that somebody can go through uh, hormone therapy? Can they change their gender if they're a child? I think that's totally fine as long as... Gross. As I... Gross. Everyone is consistent. 12 year olds marrying 30 year olds? I'm going to stay away from that one. <laughs> they're both gross. I just find it interesting that you spent the 14 and a half of the 15 minutes shitting on Charlie's idiot take 
barely talking about Sneeko going, his community will think it's okay because, you know, that's just like a religious thing. It's gross. It's disgusting. It's using religion to justify grooming. That's actually be fucking real. This is mega grooming. Allowing a child to marry an adult is like fucking mega grooming. <laughs> Again. Just to be clear, because I'm looking it up on the side, some of these statistics for detransitioning are 1% to 8%. I just want to be like, I want to be accurate. Again, I want to be like accurate. So they're 1% to 8%. Again, there's different types of detransitioning. Some are, this is not for me detransitioning. Some are, hey, I'm detransitioning to have a kid or because I've hit the right like level um, that I want hormonally or because they don't get enough financial or emotional support in their real life. There's a lot of different factors here. You think that's totally fine. Again, I hope that Charlie, who has what, 10 million subscribers? Like, I don't know. I don't use Reddit or I don't, I don't know what his community is. I got to figure out what to call myself. Reaction to this is, but I certainly hope that they're like, yo, what? We now know, okay, by the way, for the people that actually, you know, uh, <laughs> actually make it this far in the video, okay? Okay. This is why you said it. Moist Critical gets backlash for misgendering Chris Tyson. This guy is just a normie that espouses normie opinion. Dude, saying the word normie is just so cringe, bro. Oh my God. Like unironically, a normie? That's fine. The most popular content creators on this platform are normies. Moist the fuck is a normie, dude? This is so, this is so cringe. Critical enjoys YouTube handpicking his videos and making them number one in trending constantly. Okay. <sighs> Why do you think that that is? I don't know. I mean, listen, he's, I don't know. He seems like he has safe takes. Typically, you know, you could give him a little bit of credit for even having this conversation for getting staying away from his safe take. Frankly, it's going to be how he responds to it. Does he educate himself to be better next time in this topic? Or does he just go, sorry, audience, let me just fucking get jerk up. So sorry. <laughs> so. What's happening here? Here's Melanie Mack. Guys, this. Oh, my mom's calling me. Give me a second. Sorry, my mom called me. She's going in for like a surgery tomorrow for her bladder. So she just let me know what time I have to go there. Okay, let's continue. Totally okay to get a perfectly healthy body part removed uh, if you've had therapy and that's what you want to do. Well, nobody's getting their wiener removed at nine years old, just to be clear. What? I want to name, I don't want to name my character, bro. Literally what? Once you're 18, I don't have much to say, okay? But look, Charlie, I implore you, implore you. Increasing number of European nations now adopt a more cautious approach to, quote, gender-affirming care among young ones. Good. That's it. Good. <laughs> they should be. I'm happy about that. They should be adopting a more... They should be adopting a more cautious... Um, they should be more cautious. Absolutely. Them being more cautious doesn't mean that it is a bad thing. What that means is like, okay... We want to make sure we get this right. It doesn't mean that getting uh, transitioning when you're under 18 is a bad thing, right? There's a, they're trying to figure out the best outcomes overall, what that we could possibly get to, and it's getting gender affirming care under 18 is closer to positive than not doing anything until you're 18. It needs to be a little bit more intelligent than that. I don't believe in top or bottom surgery until you're 18. Um, but outside of that, like you're we're trying to figure out what the best outcomes are for people with gender dysphoria and also trying to make sure we properly diagnose people with gender dysphoria. So by the way, it's not gender affirming care. It's in my opinion, pseudoscience. Okay. You just to be clear. You're the one that said that COVID wasn't real. You don't think climate change is real. You don't think that ge this, that uh, gender dysphoria is real. What do you think is real? What science do you want to lean into? What's the science that you believe in? I, I don't understand. Not, to, not for nothing, but the conservatives, by every objective metric, are the is a party of non-science. <laughs> like, I don't know what else to tell you. What do you mean? It's not pseudoscience. It is mental health science, and mental health science is relatively new. So, but okay, cool stuff. European countries restrict trans health care for people who are not old enough to make their decision. I okay, good. They should make sure that they... Do it the right way. Again, why do you think that is? And this is Europe, okay? Okay. England's health service stops prescribing puberty blockers to, to people who are not old enough. All of these... Two, two transgender kids. Okay. Hopefully, they're, hopefully that is scientific and not um, because they're specifically... Well, this one just seems because they want to they want to they want to make sure they move forward correctly. We talked about this one. This is like the England healthcare system. They just want to make sure they're moving forward correctly. It's not them saying that it's wrong. 
Thank you for the five dollars from Mason. No offense, but he's a YouTuber. What the fuck does he know? Well, I mean, I guess you could say the same thing about me, huh? These articles are from this year. Okay. There have been several major studies that talk about, okay, um, that we don't know now anymore, right? We don't know. It has no impact. The big thing was like, this will keep them alive. They're going to stay alive. It's not that we don't know. It's that the stu there's not enough robust studies about it because it's new. They just want to move forward carefully. If you read that article, like for what I just read on the side, like it, they still, they just want to do it. Them, they want to make sure that it's, they do it in clinical trials now is what they want to do. They want to make sure that they do it correctly. So it's just done in clinical, uh, clinical trials instead of like having it more access, widespread access. It makes sense. We now know the data says that that is not true. No, it doesn't. It doesn't say it's not true. That it does not help them stay alive. It's not what the data says. Okay. And the lie that was told to their parents will forever. And it's not a lie. And you can't say it here and be like, they're just trying to keep kids. I love how in this video, he's like, they're just trying to keep kids on uh, lifetime. Uh, they're trying to make them lifetime uh, fucking clients. But it's the same institutions that you are having this conspiracy against that are like, hey, we should be more careful moving forward. So it doesn't make any sense destroy those kids lives and their bodies this is a guy that talks from a high place online who has made okay. countless videos calling logan paul uh, a scammer and then when he sees logan paul in real life this is how he reacts what's up bro you really you're really going for this moist critical hit piece here huh so we have Sneeko, the one who thinks that kids children that just started puberty can be maritally raped by adults and you're like i don't really want to touch that it's kind of yucky and then you have Charlie who says who ignorantly talks about gender dysphoria when he's generally right, but like still it, expressing it poorly. And you're like going in on him as hard as possible. That's interesting. That's interesting. That's very interesting. That's a self report. Sneeko's, Sneeko's logic is by every objective metric more dangerous. That's little kids being forced to marry adults, forcing them into abuse in societies that are typically that are much more male oriented where they have like the full power in those relationships you're not allowed to get divorced it's okay to rape your wife of any age in a lot of um non-western countries all of this go because they looked mature enough and you're sitting here going in on charlie because he has because he's because he spoke very poorly about gender dysphoria it's just very interesting how little you care about kids because this narrative always goes around of like oh conservatives just care about the kids blah, blah, blah. no you don't you don't give a fuck about kids because if you cared about kids, you would be going in. Half of this video would have been criticizing Moist Critical and the other half would have been criticizing Sneeko. But you don't care about kids. It's pretend. It's make-believe fantasy world. You don't give a shit about kids because you're just not going to talk about it. Yeah, I know this really bad thing happened in this conversation, but I don't want to talk about that because Charlie made fun of me once and uh, uh, you know he's kind of stupid. Okay, cool. Great. What about Sneeko? The guy who says it's okay to rape kids. It's okay for a fucking 18 year old to marry 12 years. It's insane. It's insane logic. What, what do you have to say about that? Oh, I don't really want to talk about it. You know, I might be able to get demonetized. Who gives a shit? Fuck. I, I thought this was about the kids. What happened about the kids? I don't get it. How you doing? I like your video. Thank you for the $2 from Ellington Moose. Quarter pounder trying to trade for a newer model. Okay. I, I know you've talked some shit, but everybody hates Logan Paul. Is uh. everyone around Logan just a fucking idiot? Take it personally. I don't. Okay. I, don't, thank God. I understand him. Thank God he said. Dap him up. Also, Prime's pretty fire. Thanks. Oh, I love your drink. That's what he says behind when no, when he doesn't think anybody's watching and he talks to these people that he criticizes from his high horse. In real life, he daps them up and says, "Oh, I actually love your product, and I'm glad you're not mad at me." Okay, cool. Yeah, sure. Criticize most critical. Are you joking? Are Over you joking? 10 million subscribers, and this is your hero. Okay. No, again, it's not my hero. Again, Charlie, <laughs> I implore you to talk. What's your name, my character? Guys, tell me what I should name my character. To literally any detransitioner, okay? There are dozens I can put you in contact with. Cool. And when Charlie responds to this, and he likely will, he'll say something like, oh, if he chooses to make a video and he addresses this video, he'll say, oh, uh, Jeremy once said, and there we have it, yikes. And one time, uh, uh, you know, I went on this, on his, uh, I, went, I did some deep diving and I found that, you know, seven years ago, he said, he'll focus on obfuscating and whataboutism, and he won't address that he made an extraordinarily okay. dangerous comment to an... He didn't make a dangerous comment. He made a stupid comment. Extraordinarily um, uh, uh, impressionable young audience, which is who watches his content, okay? And the fact that he thinks having these type of... All I ask for you, Charlie, is to look up how they do the surgery. Look how they make somebody who has an innie have an Audi. Just... Who cares about what the surgery looks like? That does not matter. 
I don't give a shit about what surgeries look like. I care about what the data is saying. And the data is saying we're trending in the right direction, but we should be cautious. That's it. And I agree with that. I agree with what's, I agree. <laughs> okay. Look it up. Look at some of the pictures and tell me you think that that's no big deal. That's the same as picking up badminton and quitting after six months. Okay. These people are forever permanently damaged by this and they are already in a, in a fragile. Some people are sure. And some people are permanently positively impacted. Again, I don't believe in top or bottom surgery before 18, but okay. Mental situation. Obviously okay. I believe that, you know, um, gender dysphoria is real, just like body dysmorphia. But I also believe okay. that the number of people that claim to be suffering from it is overinflated because it has become a social contagion that is pushed by the clout that it receives. So the the perspective, I can somewhat agree kind of a little bit with the perspective. Um, social contagion makes it seem so malicious. It is right now gender, really any identity conversation is something people, people want to be unique, right? <clears throat> Do I think there's a lot of people identifying as trans because they want to be unique? 100%, 1000%, of course. You know, especially young people in, in school. But you have to differentiate kids looking for attention or experimenting with their gender versus somebody that has legitimate diagnosed gender dysphoria. And it is the doctor's responsibility to be able to differentiate between the two. One of the biggest things that is, that is a, a problem, this is the actual biggest problem, is that this is a mental health science and there's no way to objectively ascertain whether somebody has gender dysphoria other than based on what they are telling you. Additionally, kids nowadays have more resources and are smarter than ever before. So it is possible, and I'm not saying that it is likely, but it is possible that you have a 13-year-old, let's say, who says that they have gender dysphoria and they're expressing that but they've also looked into what they need to show to express in order to get the doctor to prescribe them particular medications or particular treatments or particular pathways that could pretend, and that might lead to them thinking that like, Oh, I have, I have gender dysphoria. I'm going to emulate everything. Cause listen, here's the thing. I wouldn't doubt that there's a kid that feels a frustration and they think it's gender dysphoria because they're self-diagnosing. So they go look it up. They educate themselves on what they need to tell the doctor in order to get this diagnosis. Then they get the care and they're like, Oh my God, I'm so miserable and unhappy. That absolutely could be a thing. The unfortunate reality, though, is that like uh, most of the time, that what's actually happening is there. It's actually real. So really, don't lie about your symptoms, right? Um, yeah. If we had an objective test to figure out somebody had gender dysphoria, that'd be great. But we don't. So like, be honest with your doctor. That's really all I can say. Most of the time, again, the statistic is between 1% and 8% detransition, which means 92 to 99% of the time we are transitioning correctly. Again, not all detransitions are uh, incorrect diagnoses. Some of them are to have kids. Some people detransition <coughs> excuse me, uh, to have kids because they don't have the mental or emotional support. Some people do it because they were misdiagnosed. There's so many. Some people do it just because they want to stop the care and they want to like maintain at a particular hormone level. There's just so many different variables. And that's why it's good that people with like doctorates are the ones that are actually facilitating these studies, the research, and the care for these people. The the literal real life plot armor. Okay. It provides to people like Chris Tyson. Chris Tyson doesn't have real life plot armor. Let's be absolutely real. You guys have been harassing Chris Tyson for a long time. They happen to be a disgusting person that made extraordinarily inappropriate jokes that could have been that could that with which conversation could lead to legitimately grooming young people 100 percent. have we seen objective enough data to say they absolutely were trying to groom not yet we would need to see more sexual conversation a lot of it seems to be extraordinarily edgy and inappropriate jokes they should not be allowed or they should not be allowed to be a content creator they should not be allowed to be around kids they are supporting the Shad Man, which is absolutely disgusting. If you think that they're a predator, I completely understand why. For me, I need to see like private DMs of them trying to solicit sex to be like 100% groomer. Because a lot of it seems like, haha, this is the meme. Because there are so many different creators like 10 years ago who were supporting this fucking disgusting Lollicon artist. Um, because that was the meme back then. Even big creators that I've seen that I enjoy now. I'm not going to talk about who because I, I, I don't really care. I, I do care, but it's like that's really weird that that was the meme back then. Right? Um... But they don't have plot armor. Because, like, that's why none of the other creators that also supported Shadman are getting any real slack or flack for it. 
People have been like going after Chris for a while, and by the way, they deserve all the criticism they're getting. I'm just saying it's not pl it's not armor for Chris. It's a fucking target on their back for people. Like, just be clear. Right now, your whole video where Sneeko said it's okay to rape kids, you're focused on Charlie speaking poorly about trans issues. You guys are obsessed. Conservatives are obsessed with trans shit. Chris Tyson deserves the criticism, but you guys are fucking obsessed to the point where you're more interested in, in speaking negatively of trans people than def than actually defending. Kids, just be clear. You guys are fucking, you guys are like ignoring sneak out. Okay. The percentage of people that identify in this group is probably a hundred times the number of people that are really gender dysmorphic. And it's people like Charlie, and it's people like Mr. Beast presenting, presenting this and, and doing their best to normalize it. And even Mr. Beast is not trying to normalize anything. Mr. Beast had a friend that happened to be trans and they should have fired the fuck out of that friend to be clear way long ago when they hot, when they were like having, when they were sleeping with their fucking employee, um, Mr. Uh, Chris Tyson. I have a video about that. You should go watch that one. It's like my most recent one where it's, I think it's like, uh, you know, the final nail in the coffin. Um, cause it's in, inappropriate, like unprofessional relationships, just idiot shit, you know? reward it like the world did with Dylan Mulvaney that creates the situation where we have Dylan an Mulvaney. unending social contagion where more and more people are going to do this. They're going to you know, remove parts of their bodies and they're going to be like, well, Charlie said <laughs> that's never going to happen in any capacity. Okay. Charlie said that's not a big deal. It is a big deal, dude. And I implore you to get educated before you tell your 10 million followers <laughs> that it's like, you know, quitting football. That's insane. Okay. Thank you. Well, football can give you a TBI, so maybe that is more dangerous than people transitioning. <laughs> All right, great. So I, what I expected, it was going to be a little slap on the wrist for Sneeko saying it's okay to rape kids, and then hyper-focus on Charlie's very poorly explaining himself and just having like a trans hysteria. That's what I figured. I'm curious about uh, Nick Merckx's perspective. You know, I want to see if it's a balanced take or if it's some of the same. Where it's like, yes, Nico said this, but let's focus on the trans shit. So this is this Nick. So it's called Moist Critical and Nico are both out of their minds. Dude, dude, what's going? So it's a it's a it's a strong lead. We're on, we're off to a good start with the title. Okay, let's see. Dude, dude what's going on today, man? Listen, I'm gonna get right to the point, man. All this right. video here is uh, the definition of just why I'm so disappointed in the gaming community, the gaming scene. Okay. Uh, this world. The direction it's going in general, both sides of this stuff, it's just unbelievable, man. I want you to listen to the video, okay. hear my thoughts, and I want your comments down below. Talk to me. Bro, brothers and sisters, am I offbeat here? I mean, I feel like a dinosaur or something. What is going on? If you like the video, definitely don't forget to like the video. And I'll see you in <laughs> okay. there. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Peace and love, baby. YouTube! Okay. We are. So what I really just want to see is I want to see what the, what, like, if... I just want to see how the criticism presents itself against Charlie versus Nico. I would expect a 50-50 criticism here if you don't believe in gender dis uh, gender affirming care, right? Because again, this guy's Sneeko's talking about it being justified for kids, 12-year-olds, to be married to 18-year-olds in abusive situations, so. Going to react. Because I don't believe in the age of consent. To Sneeko and Moist Critical. That's a strong start. Talking about a couple juicy things. Let's listen. And give our feedback. Just because I don't believe in the age of consent does not mean that I want it to drop. I see that's where. Yes, it does. It means you know, so. Just to be clear, this is one of the games that Sneeko played in this conversation. He's like, just because I don't believe in age of consent doesn't mean I don't want it to drop. He wants it to be abolished, but he won't say it because he wants to sound reasonable to different audiences. So he's like, he wants you to think he means keep age of consent, but what he really means is he wants to abolish it, but he doesn't want to say it outright because he wants to appear reasonable to try to pull people over. He's been hanging out with uh, Nick Fuentes, the femboy lover, for a long time, and he's starting to learn some of these tactics where it's like it's it's unreasonable, reason, uh, an unreasonable perspective, but trying to be reasonable about the way that he's pre uh, presenting it. Like the internet can go apply that just because I'm saying, no, 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 because you're saying the definition of an adult is 18. I'm saying that that's an arbitrary number and that makes no sense. It's not arbitrary number. It does make sense, right? We base it off of physical maturity, which is, which usually finishes at 17 and then mental maturity. So we've said 18 is the time where people have the ability and the agency to be, or the ability to have agency over themselves and make reasonable decisions. They don't have to be fully mentally developed, but they have to be mentally developed to a point where they can handle themselves in the real world. 18 makes sense. It does. It is not arbitrary. It is not random. It is based off off of that data it is based off of that information the age of physical maturity which puberty ends around 17 as well as hitting enough mental maturity to make your own decisions it's not arbitrary it's not random it didn't just come out of my anus okay sense we should encourage marriage when people reach maturity that's that makes much more but he's not doing that to be clear he's reaching maturity 
wouldn't be 12 or there's no 13 or 12 year old finishing puberty at that age. They may have started it, but they are not finished with puberty. It's not about reaching an age of maturity at all. It's about when they he thinks when, he, when it's appropriate when they start that maturity. It's disgusting. Just to be clear, he's uneducated on what he's saying. Uh, that's that's even more vague, though. Like, but also, you right. directly say because it's different for everybody. When someone, when someone can legally drive, they should be able to. Uh, I don't know why he's not saying anything negative to Sneeko's perspective so far. You think he will. Legally marry. You did say that to me. Right. You when somebody, when somebody is legally ready to drive, the same thing. I think adults should drive cars. That's why I told you that. Um, yeah, but you 15 and 16 year olds can drive cars. You said when someone can. Sneeko thinks that 15 year olds are adults. That's what it is. Legally drive, Across the world, 15 and marry. 16 year olds can have sex too. I think that people but should not should operate. But see. You, you, you keep thinking that I'm saying this because I want the age to be lowered. That's not what I'm talking about at all. That's I, what it comes across as, though. When you maybe, say maybe with he does want it to be lower. He wants to abolish it. The internet brain, because people, are, because people in the West, they want to have sex all the time, and they have a, a different sort of mindset. People in, the, in Eastern countries want to have sex all the time, too. Right. Here in the Middle East, I'm in the Middle East right now, they want to get married. Look, man. No, they don't. They don't. <laughs> it's not true. But okay. You're acting like they don't want to have sex in the Middle East. <laughs> You're just being stupid. I don't know what to tell you. And Human beings are human beings. This whole in the West, in the East, let's not get too crazy here. You know what I mean? Come on now. I mean, look, I, if this is going to be this guy Sneeko trying to say the age of consent should be something different, I don't know, man. I don't Married. Know. He's saying it should be gone. You're not listening? And then have sex. So people, just because I'm saying this is not- That's not how people in the East are. It's not this magical place. I mean- it's, it's In a lot of Eastern countries, it's legal to rape your spouse, just to be clear. Like, these are very regressive laws. They don't value women as much in, in non-Western countries. Let's just be real. Automatically lower, lower. No, 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 that, that's, not, that's not the case at all. I want to ask you then, then, because uh, you're, you're insinuating that it sounds creepy and that I sound like a pedophile. What's the definition of pedophile? It's, it is an adult who is attracted to children. It's, that's- Kind of, I mean, it's really attracted to prepubescent children. It doesn't really matter. We don't need to call Sneeko a pedophile. Sneeko is a is is a predator justifier, is what it comes down to. Yeah, uh, it comes from the Greek word uh, pedo means child and uh, file means love. So Great. somebody who loves a child. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A lot of research on that, Sneeko. An adult who was. How do you know the etymology? Is it the right the etymology of the word? Why do you know that? Attracted to a child. <laughs> yeah, to a child. Somebody who has not reached physical maturity. Yes. That's the definition then, of a child. Somebody who hasn't right. reached physical maturity. 12 year old hasn't reached physical maturity. So it has nothing to do with 18. The definition of the word talks about talks about physical maturity, not the US government definition that you're basing it off of. But there needs to be an agreed upon place. Otherwise, you get into this area. Again, you said when you can legally drive, you should be able to legally marry. It. Right. And we don't have to talk about sex. Do you think it's okay to be marrying a 15 or 16 year old? Probably not. Right. Like I would imagine probably not. It depends. So this is where it depends. Fucking crazy. That the age of consent becomes arbitrary. I don't even believe it doesn't become arbitrary. Like that consent is a is a is a weird thing to even speak about. But it should be it should be the father. Right. If, if I want to marry a girl, I shouldn't even just get consent from her. I should get consent from her parents. She yeah. should want to say no, we don't need to give parents that much power. Honestly, that's becomes abusive. That's why there are parents who sell their kids off to grown men to make money. Like this is something that does happen in places where there's arranged marriages. All right. The, it's usually families trying to exchange some kind of goods with each other to, you know, resource harvest rather than focusing on positive outcomes or trying to focus on it's cringes. It sounds love actually enjoying being together. If you don't love or want to be with your, per your partner, if you're forced to be with your partner, that's where abuse takes hold because you're forced to be with somebody that you may not actually be want to be with based on multiple different factors. But it opens up for tons and extraordinary amounts of abuse, especially since, again, in these relationships, it is very male dominated and the women can just be raped and be abused and it's generally nobody will care there's no actual marriage rights you can't get divorced you're stuck if you're a woman in these relationships you are fucked that's what it comes down to non-consensually say yes her parents would want to say yes that's consent from the family and then you get married that's yeah. the islamic way that's the only yeah. way that makes sense yeah. this american way of this just don't know about that okay girl wants to have sex now she gave consent and then you get all these false allegations like oh she was drunk oh she took it back oh she retracted consent all this stuff like there, there's no you can't retract consent even, there's not even a specific way that we can define consent. What is consent? Some people say it's yes. Some people say it's like nonverbal communication. Some people say that it doesn't count because she was under the influence or she, she was intimidated. Even this is an arbitrary, is a, is a weird way to define when you're allowed to be in a relationship with somebody. So you're allowed to do it when your dad watches you fuck? I don't understand what you're saying. Just because your dad gives you approval in getting married to somebody doesn't mean that every instance would be consensual. What I find interesting is this idea that like, well, the dad should be the one that'd be like, yeah, get married. And then what? Is it all consensual from there? Can Because the, the, it is in those cultures, it is okay to just take advantage of your wife and force them to have sex with you whenever you want. So like you're not 
like consent isn't forever. You can remove consent. You can't retroactively remove consent. And I understand there's some people who may do that and you know falsely claim sexual assault. Most of the time that happens. That's not what's happening, by the way. Um, most sexual assaults are not because a woman was like, you know what, I changed my mind. Oh, I was raped now. That's most of the time not happening. But that does like you can still like I have to get consent from my wife to have sex with her in a relationship. And since we're both equal in this country. <laughs> She has the ability to say no, and I have to listen. I want to listen anyway, but in these other countries, if you don't want to listen to that, it doesn't matter because marital rape is legal. You're kind of talking around it, though. Those are all very different things. So, like I said, we don't have to be yeah. talking about Where sex. Are we going I was right talking now? about marriage. The question was, do you think, and you said, when you are legally able to drive, you should be able to legally marry. Do you think it is okay for an adult to legally marry a 15 or 16-year-old? Jesus Christ, this reaction is just like so bare bones. What the fuck is this? Okay, well, no. by, this, by my logic, if the man is physically mature, if he's went through puberty and he's phys and he's mentally ready at the age of 16, he's an adult. If he wants to get married to an Sorry, no. girl, if he's went through puberty and okay, well, no, by, this, by my logic, if the man is physically mature, if he's went through puberty and he's phys and he's mentally ready at the age of 16, he's not mentally ready. We've decided that that mental readiness is not applied at 16 in our country. Cause, yeah, because you're not ready physically. Just you might be physically mature, but you are not mentally ready at 16 years old. You know, if you want to have a conversation about how you think that 16 is young enough to be mentally ready and you think that your age of consent cutoff is 16 or 17, okay, we can have that conversation, right? I would say more time is needed. We could even talk about raising the age of consent, but that's not what Sneeko's saying. Sneeko's not saying, hey, you know what? Physical maturity typically ends at 16 or 17, so I believe the age of consent is 16. I'd still disagree. I think it's gross, but he's not saying that. What he's saying is that there are 12-year-olds who are mentally mature enough to marry adults, okay? This take sounds a little more reasonable. It's still, in my opinion, wrong, but it sounds more reasonable, but this is not his actual take. It is not just 16 or 17-year-olds that are closer to 18. It is anybody who he deems arbitrarily with nothing other than they have nice tits that they're old enough to be able to get married that's it there's nothing else they look ready that's all he's saying because puberty ends at like 17 right so if you're sitting here and again he said it before 15 14 13 12 year olds you're saying that they could somehow in any universe be ready for some kind of marriage to a legitimate adult it, this is more about whether the what it, this comes down to is this is about what if you think a child looks attractive enough to be able to get married. That's literally all that's being said. Because there's no, literally no other. There's no other argument here. Thank you for the five dollars from Duke of Nylon Variety Gaming. The quarter pounder once made a video criticizing Matt Walsh. The very next day, he made it apologizing to his audience. Who has the echo chamber? <laughs> that's interesting. He's an adult. If he wants to get married to another nah, girl nah. who becomes no, a woman, I'm saying, no, 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 no. I'm, I just, um, I don't know where this is going, but you know, I, like even 18, man, you know, like there's this expectation here that when you're 18, you're grown up, you're an adult, yeah, in the court of law, yeah. But bro, these people are kids, man. A lot of these people don't even grow up till they're 23, 24. I know that's not what we're talking about growing up, but I mean, like you know, adolescent minds, man. You know what I mean? No experience. They're not ready for these things that this guy Sneeko is saying that they're ready for, let alone marriage and sex and all these other things, man. I mean, this is, I don't agree with it, man. I yeah, I mean, I agree with him not agreeing with it. It sounds like there's a conversation open to be like, oh, let's talk about 18 maybe being too low. Maybe we should raise the age of consent. So I don't agree with it. Said an adult is it okay for an adult? To right, and I said, but we we haven't even established exactly what an adult. Is. So if somebody goes through puberty and they're physically ready, they're biologically ready, they're an adult. So they could the two sixteen year olds can be considered adults by my logic. We're not, but we're not we're not talking about two what are you talking about? We're talking about, nah, we're talking about an adult. That is an adult. Arguing, what, what, this is where this is where like why Charlie lost his conversation. Stop letting him dictate the direction. Stop letting him dictate the age. Stop letting him say, "Well, sixteen, you're sixteen, dude." He. Bring it to 13. Be like, do you think 13 and 23 would be appropriate? Sneeko will say yes. You can get him to say yes to that because Destiny has gotten him to say yes to that, basically. You can let you can get him there and then argue from there because, again, Sneeko's take is that once you finish puberty, you're an adult. Sneeko's take is once you start puberty, you're an adult. Sneeko is disgusting fucking animal. I don't know. Like, that is that is the reality. What I'm saying is that... Are, so, so then what is an adult now? Okay. Let, we'll use your age. Someone who is 25. Is it okay for someone who is in their 20s to marry a 15 or 16-year-old when you're... See, this is what I'm saying. Don't say 15 or 16 or in your 20s because then he can be like, oh, uh, 16 and, and 20? I think that's okay. Say fucking 14 and 20 years old. 14 and 25. Say these words. Say the fucking words. Be an adult. Fucking... Why, why are you... Why? Why are you so, like, inconsistent about it? Like, well, what, if what if they're like... What's the use 25? What if they're in their 20s? Just fucking use an age. It's so goddamn infuriating. 
And let me explain, when you're doing your arguments, it's coming from an adult. I, I've never heard you say, like, oh two teenagers God. should be able to marry. Like, I haven't heard that with these takes. I'm talking about someone in your position in the 20s. Is it okay for you to marry a 15 or 16 year old? <laughs> but teenager, even, even bringing up this term that has nothing to do with child and adult. So there's two phases. Uh, you're a child and then you physically mature. I don't know why you're, you can't. There's not just two phases. You're not just a child and you turn to an adult. It's a sliding scale. Your body becomes. I'm saying the difference between a child and adult is when you're physically and when you're, you're biologically, when you're mentally ready to have kids. Sex change, like Chris from Michigan, I will say it's, it's, take hormone you blockers. it's a weird conversation. Is, you're, not, you're not listening. This is, this is the point. It is. Okay. So now here's, we're getting close to the conversation about transitioning now. The one thing I'm, I'm looking for here is Nick Merckx is definitely against Sneeko's take, and I appreciate that. But I'm looking for the same energy because <laughs> Sneeko's just fine raping kids right now. That's, just, that's what it is. All right. So now, now I want to see how outraged are you when it comes to transitioning. <laughs> point. You can take hormone blockers. You can take puberty blockers. Okay, when you're a child, when you're 16, you can go change your gender. Okay, but you can't get married. Why is that? Well, then by your logic, you'd be able to change your gender and get married if you think a 16 year old is old enough. If, you're, if your age of consent is like 16 or 15, then wouldn't a kid be able to transition at that point? Yeah, that's a fair point. Well, as much that, as I, don't want to I, I don't know. I feel like that's a pretty obvious question. No, it's not. There are it's not. See, if, not you take, if you cut your penis off, like. You can't, you don't, no one ever cuts their penis off. Chris and Mr. Beast, if you cut your- That's not how it works. Your penis off, that is a life altering decision. It is. You can't, you can't glue it back on. You can, yeah, they don't have a cut off though. So they push it inside, just be clear. You get divorced if you get married. Right. This is a commitment that you're taking. Fair too. A child, based off the liberal point of view that you believe in, they can have gender surgery. Well, they can change liberal. forever. Do you believe that somebody can go through uh, hormone therapy? Can they change their gender if they're a child? I think that's totally fine as long as everyone is consenting. <laughs> when you talk about this topic, you need to be so careful about the way that you talk about it because it is a hot topic. So when you say, like, can a child transition, you have to talk. Basically, what you have to do at the end of the day is you have to express an age-appropriate level of transitioning based on the medical data that we have that is ever-shifting, right? So that means I don't personally believe in any top or bottom surgery before you're 18, right? When it comes, Then we talk about social and then hormonal transitioning. Social transitioning, I do not care about at all. This, you're literally just identifying as the opposite or a different gender or whatever. I don't care. There's no lifelong decision changing. What we get into is when we talk about hormonal changing. So puberty blockers um, uh, and then like some kind of HRT. That's where things get more confusing and frustrating because I, I think most people don't want their kid to go through that because that is life-altering. And what if there's a mistake made? That's how I feel. If I had a trans kid, I wouldn't want them to go through a hormonal transition until they're 18. However, the reality is, is that there is decades of research when it comes to these topics that's not perfect because it is still a very new science, generally speaking. It's really only ramping up now. We only really started like 20 years ago, and that's very new for mental health. But this data points in the direction of providing gender affirming care through potentially hormone blockers or puberty blockers and then hormone like HRT. There are other places like England who are being more hesitant about it. They're taking more control over it, not letting it be as wide, uh, wide ranged, but doing clinical trials to be more careful to make sure the outcomes are more positive, which I think is perfectly fine. Um, but that's where I'd go. And so the person I would go to if my kid had gender dysphoria is I would probably go to multiple therapists that had doctorate degrees. I'd get second and third um, you know, opinions on it. And then we would go from there with the people that's job it is to facilitate these transitions because that's their job to do. If you live in a fantasy world where there it's all a conspiracy to get lifelong medical partners or um, patients, I don't know how to talk to you because like, I, I don't know what to tell you. I just don't because like, what am I? So I do nothing. And my kid just hate, it doesn't, they don't, even, they don't even have to take their own life. Like I don't care. Like I do care about that, but they just hate themselves because they weren't able to get the treatment that they needed because I have, a, I'm a conspiracy theorist. You know, it's a very complicated topic, but you have to express yourself better. So you come off more reasonable. You can't just be like, yeah, it's whatever. Because again, you're letting Sneeko define the ages. So Sneeko right now is harping on like nine years old. Cause I watched the whole conversation or most of it. He's harping on nine. So now what you're saying is like, yeah, it's fine if nine year olds cut their wieners off. Cause that's what Sneeko kept saying. So it's like, no, that's insane. That's an idiotic take. You need to express yourself more intelligently than that. <laughs> okay. So as long as everyone parents, yeah, this, this. Oh, this scene is so cooked, man. These YouTubers and these streamers and just this gaming community, man. It's just so different than what it used to be. And this world is changing. And I don't like any part of this shit, man. Yes, the How world is changing. How can say that sentence out loud? Irreversible changes to the body as a child. 
as long as they have consent from the parents. As far as this guy critical is concerned. What? Okay. Are okay with it and you are okay with it? I am I think that's totally a familiar decision to make. Yeah. Okay. So a child can cut their penis off and take hormone blockers and change their biology forever, but they can't get married? Oh, well, that's a decision that now extends beyond the family because now you're bringing in a different party. So if you have someone that's your age coming in saying, I want to marry that child. It's just the way that it's expressed. Like the way that Sneeko has this conversation expressed, you're not going to win. But that's not how this works, right? Like you don't just cut your wiener off. It's not what it comes down to. Again, the outcomes based on our data seem to be more positive when somebody with legitimate gender dysphoria goes through age-appropriate gender affirming care, right? Versus forcing a child to be married, absolutely outcomes are high susceptibility to abuse in other countries they don't care about that abuse in eastern countries where it's okay to rape your spouse it's okay for the man to be fully dominant divorce is illegal you can hit your spouse that abuse is that they don't they don't account for it they do not care about those things they do not care about abuse over there in, the, in those areas and i'm not saying that like all muslims do this americanized westernized muslims are fucking this is great right but like we have better values in the Western countries that provide to get rid of this abuse, right? We have divorce. You can't hit your wife. You can't rape your wife. These things are like objectively and absolutely illegal over here, right? But that's why we made these things illegal. That's why you can't do like these arranged marriages are not, they're just wrong. Forcing two kids together that don't know themselves enough to set their own boundaries and be together in a relationship. Um, of course that's wrong, right? Because that could lead to unhappiness and like levels of abuse. So the outcomes of forced arranged marriages is going to be abusive. <laughs> That's why we don't do them over here, right? But when it comes to like gender affirming care, based on the data, which is ever shifting, it could change tomorrow. The outcome is more positive, and that's how we do it. We do it based on outcomes, positive outcomes. <laughs> and when it comes to people, we want to base our everything's off of positive outcomes for people. Okay. Just to be clear. Well, I, yep, I don't think that can happen under any circumstance. So, you, no. But it's still a personal decision. You're still deciding. Take the other party out of the equation. It's a personal it's decision. If I'm, or if I'm 16 and I personally want to marry this girl, she's beautiful, she's 21 years old, her family wants to do it, my family wants to do it, you're saying, I can't do that. We're both consenting, I'm ready to go, I'm physically mature, but I'm not allowed to marry because Moy says that's, that woman's a pedophile. But if then... The next day I leave it, I'm depressed. I want to cut my penis off. I can go right into the clinic, snip it off, and start taking HRT like Chris Tyson. That's a society that makes sense to you? It is. Uh, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Everyone okay. has complete, yep, I believe. I mean, <laughs> this is why should, no, I'm most lost. You would say that the reason that we set a hard boundary of 18 to get married is because you are not meant, first of all, 16, you're not even physically mature yet, but you are not mentally mature enough to make that type of decision. 100%, right? There is no doctor facilitation of it, right? The doctor, when it comes to training, you shouldn't cut your penis off, but the doctor aspect of this conversation, of like the doctor aspect is relevant because they are the objective data. The objective data says arranged marriages are abusive. And also 16 and 21, I don't even know if you could get married by that. If like, I think you need your parents' consent. So I guess you could do that. We're not just talking about that. We're talking about arranged marriages more than anything else. Um, but you say that person is too young to be able to engage in a relationship with a 21 year old, right? And we know based on the outcomes that that is wrong. They're not mentally mature enough to be able to be on the same level as a 21 year old. So the outcomes are most likely going to be poor versus somebody with diagnosed gender dysphoria, not just anybody in, in the entire world, potentially going through a transition, doctor facilitated with actual objective data, with an actual, uh, you know, doctor, with an actual doctorate who has the ability to facilitate this uh, accurately, safely, healthily, be able to detect the signs that maybe this isn't the right treatment, catch it early, diagnose. It's a very different situation. If everyone wow. has the right to do with their body, what they- But going along with the way that Sneeko presents it is gonna make you take an L every single time. Want to do. It, some things will never change about what I view as good and bad. But there are, again, some that will. See, that's, like, that's so... This guy Critical is talking in definitives, absolutes. You know, he said this, there are some things that are never going to change about the way that I feel. But that's not true. People change, people evolve, people grow. It's, it's, a, it's a for sure. It's a for well, sure, but just to be clear, because Nick Merckx didn't watch this part of the debate, and so far, I, you know, I, I appreciate the way he's expressing himself, to be clear. Sneeko also says the same thing. He will never change. It's just that his chain, his basis, his moral, moral basis is Islam, where uh, Moist Critical's moral basis is you know whatever his moral basis is. so they both effectively said they're not going to change on this topic just to be fair to both of them for certain in life i know i'm talking in for it but that, we, we, everybody grows 
down or up, but we grow, man. Our opinions change. Does this guy have children? Because let me tell you here, buddy. Okay? If by some miracle, I don't mean to be a little disrespectful here, but 5'3", long hair, talking like this. If by some you got you got some money, though, but if by some miracle you have a kid, this opinion of yours might change. Sneeko as well, man. The sne- he might be right. He might he might 100% be right about that. That's going to be very possible. Sneeko got kids? No. I just don't, I don't understand both of these opinions, man. Like, I, I don't understand the trans, and I don't understand how Sneeko was saying that a 16-year-old can get married, man. I mean, imagine that's your daughter, 16 or 15 or whatever it is over there. I have no idea, but imagine it is. Come on, man. She ain't grown up yet. She a little ass kid. I don't understand this stuff, man. It just seems so simple to me. But then I hear people like this get up there with these big followings and talk about it the way they do, and they're so sure, they're so locked in and locked on, and I'm just like, what? Like in the case of self-defense, because I would say okay. killing is always bad until it's not, like in self-defense. But so, there are things that would never change. For example, I'll give you one that will never change: mm-hmm. cold-blooded murder. You okay. kill someone in cold blood, completely innocent person, that's never going to change. Because no of what happens. Because of- wow, what a hot take. Thank you for the five dollars, Willow Amnesty. Every night I go to sleep and hope that Papa comes and licks my feet. Okay. <laughs> What's wrong with you? With a shining head and beard so long, I only wonder how's that dong. Wow, I really appreciate the um, I appreciate the poem very much. Thank you. That harm someone. You shouldn't harm other people. Yes, I agree. Someone has just died here. A completely innocent person is now dead. <clears throat> so why can a child? What's this? I knew himself? that was coming. So why why can a child cut his penis off and harm himself? A child can't cut their penis off. Just to be clear and. I mean, we've said this a hundred times. There's no point in saying it again. Yeah, that's entirely the decision. This falls right in line with my beliefs that people can make their own choices. Oh, see, this is what I'm talking about. Dude. This is so fucking. You sound so fucking stupid. Sorry, I don't mean to be rude. Okay, so you're, you're saying nobody should be harmed, and then Steve goes, "What if a, he says, what if a kid cuts his dick off?" And you're like, "No, okay, whatever." Okay, so you look hypocritical there, right? We understand that. What you would say is multiple things. The first thing is that kids don't cut their dicks off. I don't believe you should get bottom surgery before 18. And then also going through a transition is not going to be harm to the child. Physical alteration would be a positive thing mental health wise for somebody with gender dysphoria. That's how you'd answer this. But you're just like, yeah, it is harm, but just cut the dick off. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, this is why you look terrible. Like, you can't say that like you have, you're against harm and then not actually argue this harm point. At least say it doesn't. It's a, I don't think that would be harmful, so that you you seem consistent or something for their own bodies. If I decide, if I decide to say, man, it's clips, not mags, and I decide to shoot you, that's a personal decision. It doesn't change no, the fact I mean, that it's you've wrong. You've taken it out on me. You've killed me, and from a personal decision. That's that, that's looking at it from a very naive. <sighs> angle. You, you said you didn't make yeah, a decision yeah, yeah. for yourself. You made a decision to kill me. He and his family. He goes dry, he and she and that family. So like your argument is you can make the decision to harm yourself. So do you think it's okay for people to take their own lives? Like I don't know. You know what I mean? Like what is this? Is making that decision for that child's life. If that's the path they want to go down, it's like choosing a fucking sport. You can. No, do it's it. not. It's just, just choosing a sport. What you want to do? No, it's not. It might be though. Think about it. If you play football and you get a TBI, what's worse, a trans kid or a brain dead kid? They're the same. No, I'm just kidding. That's a joke. Okay, I'm just kidding. No, you know that's why I'm. I don't know if I want my kid to play football specifically. Another sport, maybe, but I feel like football is very dangerous. I don't want my kid to have a legitimate TBI. You you can do what you want to do, especially since they're already going to be born stupid because they're not going to be my kid. You know. No, it's not. You go play a sport. You quit. Nothing changes. You cut off your dick. You can't glue it back on. This guy's a brick, man. This guy's a brick. I thought he was smarter than this, man. On God, I thought this guy was smarter than this. What did he just say right there? What was that? Is this photoshopped? This is AI. Photoshopped? <laughs> okay. Why does Nico let him say that, man? Well, what did he just say? Yeah, that is not harming anybody. It, 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 it literally harms their body. Oh. Their body changes physically. It, 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 they have the that highest is, suicide rate out of any demographic any decision to make. Yeah, they have that suicide rate, though, because of the diagnosis, like, gen, because of their gender dysphoria, right? Like that. And a lot of that has, has to do with the environment around that's not particularly accepting of people with gender dysphoria. <laughs> So, it, it is okay. their choice. But it's not no one, in it's relation choice. to playing so a sport. So why can I not make the choice to, to shoot you Moron. and say it's clips You are mouth. harming someone that's harming you. Man. Right. You're harming yourself by cutting off your penis. It, it's same and, reason that suicide should not be allowed because you're, you're harming yourself. Why can I not kill myself but I can cut my penis off as a child? Okay. I mean, you, you can. You can do that. Right. <laughs> okay. But it's, it's, but it's, morally, it's morally wrong to kill myself, correct? I, I would I would say so, yeah. Okay, it's morally wrong to kill myself. Why is it not morally wrong for a for a nine right? if you're a doctor to cut that you know, dick off? This guy, I, How old did he say? Eighteen? What, eight year olds? Nine, if you're a doctor to cut that you know, dick off. I think he said nine year old. Dude, what Charlie, it's not happening. Why are you letting him get away with this? 
But you've just changed two different things now. now what? So are we talking from the doctor or the- Me when I'm a comp Hey, this is a comparison conversation. Child. You're the- say- say I'm the doctor. I can't- I can't kill myself. Can I- is it morally okay for me to cut off a nine-year-old's dick? If everyone around that nine-year-old is giving you the oh green light that this God. is what they want. Mm -hmm. This is their decision. Oh mm -hmm. There is no one you can't have kids. Aside from the person who is making the decision, have kids. they are There's wanting no to do that. There's no way in but the world that okay. this guy has kids, man. He can't. He doesn't have kids. Chat, I am so disappointed across the board with all of this stuff. All right. Nick Merck's video is fine, by the way. I think it was pretty solid. I appreciate it. I think it was fine. I think he, for the most part, had a pretty similar energy for both of them. You know, um, the ending was a little more energy against most critical, but then again, it was a really stupid thing that he said. So his was solid, but uh, the quarterings was not.